today is the last day of August, which means is the last official day of our carnivore diet experiment. I'm actually pretty keen to keep going for the most part. I won't be as strict about it and there are a couple things I want to add back in like avocados, I miss having MCT oil and just a few other veggies here and there. So I'm going to do it pretty slow. Max is pretty eager to finish even though he is feeling really good so we'll see how we start to feel when we start to add things back in. I'll still be documenting everything for this week. For dinner tonight, I just have some lamb's heart in the slow cooker with some bone broth I made. Interested to see how that goes. Actually, one of my viewers recommended I try cooking the heart this way. So shout out to Robin. We will check back in on that in a couple of hours. I just wanted to sit down quickly and talk a little bit about what doing this experiment has taught me, as well as what my diet is gonna look like going forward. The first thing I've learned is that this emphasis that we put on variety being the key that we have to eat a wide range of fruits, vegetables, all different types of food every single day is really not necessary. We should be focusing more on nutrient density and foods that are really, really packed with tons of vitamins and minerals as opposed to getting a little bit here and there from 10 or more different foods. I will get to what some of these super nutrient dense foods are in a second. I think a lot of people just see these beautiful pictures of these huge salads and Buddha bowls with all different colors. They look beautiful and that is what we associate with healthy. But you really aren't even getting as much bang for your buck eating all these different fruits and vegetables as you could be getting from other foods. And this is leading into my second thing I learned, which is how amazing organ meats are. Not in terms of taste, because in that respect, they are very average. Maybe I just haven't been preparing them correctly. So if you have any recipes for liver especially, please let me know in the comments down below because I really want to try to eat organ meats, liver specifically, at least once a week going forward. And that is because organ meats are the most nutrient dense foods that we can consume. Beef liver, for example, has vitamin A, D, E, K, C. It also has B12 and other B vitamins, iron, folate, all packed into one food. And not only does it contain all of these nutrients, they are also a lot more bioavailable than when you get them from plants. Your body can absorb them a lot more easily. When you're trying to get these vitamins from plants, some of them also have anti-nutrients, lectins, that completely block the absorption. Organ meats and meats in general just don't have that. The next thing I learned is that food is a lot more mental than physical for me. And I think this is the case for a lot of people out there. What I mean by this is oftentimes I eat for pleasure more than trying to simply fuel my body. And I know this is true for a lot of you as well because I've got a few comments being like, oh, there's no way I could give up carbs for a month. And I think what needs to happen is our mindset needs to shift from being about pleasure and taste to being more about providing our body energy and everything it needs to function optimally. Of course, I don't mean you should never eat something because it tastes good, but I know for myself, and I think for a lot of you, taste is oftentimes the number one priority. Even just starting this carnivore diet, the first time I did it for a week, I went into it with the worst mindset. I was just thinking, I'm gonna be bored, how am I only gonna eat meat, and the second time around, I kind of shifted that mindset to be less about taste and pleasure and more about eating to live versus living to eat. And the second time around, it's been way easier. So for anyone who's thinking about doing this diet or switching up their diet in any way for health reasons, try shifting your mindset because it is crazy how big of a role your mind actually plays. The other thing I wanna to touch on is how much fiber is overstated in our diets. I think the current dietary requirements are 
25 to 30 grams of fiber per day. And I know from experience, when I've tried to track everything I was eating and just try to get everything sort of on point, I could never hit my fiber goal. Now that also could have just been the numbers being off in my fitness pal, but even if I had a wide range of vegetables at every meal, I just could never make it to even 25 grams. Not without making a serious conscious effort at least. And obviously over this past month, I have not had any fiber and I have not had a single issue resulting from the lack of fiber. Now, don't get me wrong, I think fiber is important, but I think that it has been way overstated how much we need and that we shouldn't be trying to hit these numbers that the government has just decided on. The final thing I've learned is that simplicity is better when it comes to food. And this is for a couple of reasons. The first one being, when you're eating a wide range of foods all at once, all different flavors, all different textures, different tastes, it's hard for your body to tell when you are actually full. It is really easy to just be eating one type of food, then switch to another type of food, then go back to the other one. Oh, here's a third one. And when you're doing that, it's just, like I said, really hard for your body to tell when you're full. When you are eating one or maybe two different things, when you're full, you're full. There's no other way to explain it. Honestly, just try sitting down and eating only a steak. I guarantee you will not be able to overeat. And I mean, if you do overeat, you will know it. You will feel full and be kind of forcing it down. The other reason is that it's just so easy. Forget about trying to chop up five different types of vegetables, prepare the main part of the dish, prepare the side part. When you keep it simple, to one, two, maybe three foods. It requires a lot less thinking, a lot less prep, a lot less stress. Grocery shopping is a lot easier. Keeping it simple, it's just so easy. And I think that's what a lot of us need. I know a lot of people argue that eating healthy is too expensive, too much work, this and that, but it doesn't have to be. And I would argue that it's better to keep it simple than to have this wide variety as I was talking about before. Anyways, those are just a few things I've learned over the past month. And going forward, I plan to keep everything really simple, include organ meats at least once a week, still consume plenty of animal products, and adding back in some vegetables and fruits. Now, when I say fruits, I mean avocados, olives, coconut, as well as small amounts of low sugar berries. As I've mentioned a couple times though, I'm gonna add these things in really slowly. So tomorrow, my one addition is going to be avocado. I am really hesitant to start eating nuts again, just because it is so hard for me to only have a handful. So I'm gonna hold off on those for a little bit and be really, really mindful when I do add those back in. But anyways, I think that is all I want to say for now. So I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I forgot to let you know how the heart turned out last night. It was okay, not my favorite, but I definitely like it better than liver. It was just kind of like a chewy meat, I guess, even though it was in the slow cooker. But yeah, not bad. It is now the first day of September, so today I am going to add in avocado. The only other thing I've eaten today is a steak and a couple eggs. Yeah, I'm just gonna mash this up, add some salt and pepper, maybe some sour cream as well. And this will be my one addition. <laughs> Definitely more sour cream than I intended to use. I was like, oh, I'll just finish it off. There's only a little bit left. Put it all in and I'm like, oh, that was a little bit much. Oh my God, that avocado tasted delicious. It was perfectly ripe too. Whew, thoroughly enjoyed that. I just wanted to hop on here and catch you guys up to speed because I haven't filmed anything for a few days. And this upload is going to be a couple of days late. Last time we spoke, I said I was going to be adding things in pretty slowly. And on that first day, I just had an avocado, like 
that wasn't the only thing I ate, but that was the only thing I added in. Since then, we pretty much went on a last minute trip to Sydney. Max had to come here for work and I just tagged along for a couple of days. Anyway, long story short, I have been eating mostly carnivore plus avocado. I have had a couple of meals now that included more vegetables. First off with the avocado, totally fine. I didn't have any issues. I felt pretty much the same, just including the avocado in. And then if we've been having breakfast out, I've been having smoked salmon, eggs, avocado. That's pretty much it. And we have our own kitchen here, so I've made breakfast the other couple of times. Those have been mainly carnivore, but with avocado. Last night for dinner, I had a salad with grilled chicken on it and roast vegetables. And this morning, my stomach was pretty upset. Now that's obviously not a good test because I added so many things in at once. I'm definitely going to take it back a few notches and then really, really slowly start to add things back in. And Max, we'll talk to him about how he's going now in probably the next video. He was pretty eager to start adding things back in and spoiler alert, he's not feeling the best. I think that's just about everything I want to talk about. I lied, there's actually two other things I wanted to talk about. The first being Max's psoriasis. So in previous videos, we only showed you the small spot on his ankle cause that was the one that seemed to be showing the most improvement. But last week he had this big spot on his shin in recent months, it was looking better than it had in the past, but it was still really red. And we went to look at it a couple days ago, and it's pretty much gone. I will post before and after pictures somewhere here. <laughs> so that was crazy. The other thing I wanted to mention was listening to Michaela Peterson. If you aren't familiar with her, she has severe autoimmune issues and has had them since she was a kid like really really bad arthritis so much so that she had to get a hip and an ankle replacement when she was 17 i think and really really bad depression pretty much carnivore has healed her and anytime she tries to add anything back in her depression comes back her joints get super sore she can't walk and she was saying that she doesn't notice a difference between eating grass-fed meat and eating grain-fed meat. It doesn't cause a reaction for her. And she's also not deficient in any vitamins or minerals or anything. And as far as I know, she doesn't eat organ meat either. She does eat really, really fatty cut. About 80% fat and 20% protein is her macro breakdown. I'm still gonna stick to grass-fed when I can though, and I am still gonna try to include some organ meat, but that's so interesting. If you've been following along on this journey, thank you so much for watching. Even if you haven't and you've just watched this video, then thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and remember to click that subscribe button, and I'll see you next week. Bye!